got my shirt tucked in. Oh my goodness. Ugh. How's it going, everybody? Boy, oh boy, do we have an adventure today. Okay, so what we're gonna do? Honestly, I don't really know what we're gonna do. If you want my honest answer, I don't really know. Uh, well, I got, I got things I, I have to do, and then we'll just like go on with it from there. But I also do have some old footage that I want to put in this video, and that may be what we're titling this video, but. It was from like two months ago. Me and Augie actually went out back. We tried catching bluegill and failed horribly. So if you guys want to learn how to not catch bluegill, stay tuned to the rest of this video. But first, before we get too, too crazy, I got a couple errands I got to do. Plus, if you guys watch my last video, you would see that there's a reel I have. And I said it sucks. It seizes up, all that stuff. I'll show it to you guys. I want to try and lube it up again. Maybe I can get it working. And then uh, if I can get it working... That's a plus. But if not, then I'll drop it off when we go out to run some errands. But we got to run to, let's see, where do we got to go today? I got to clean out my little nano tank. Uh, not horribly crazy. I just got to scrub the glass because it's still in its first cycles. So it just produces algae like crazy. So I may get a couple more snails for it because I do have to go to the fish store. I need RO water. I'll show you guys my little like trash can that I use to like hold everything in. And then I got to uh, top off the reef tank because it's shooting bubbles everywhere. I'll explain that when we get there. But uh, yeah. So we're going to go along for this ride, and hopefully you guys are coming with me. Anyway, let's get to it. All right, so first things first, we got this reel. We got to fix it. Here, let me show you guys what it sounds like. Just sounds like it's grinding. Like, look at this. You can't really reel it. Let's pop its top off real quick. So something in here is making something. I got this little thing of lube here. Let me screw the handle back on. Oh, we're still sticking. So maybe this is beyond my expertise. Uh, it's not seizing up like it was, so maybe I'm just gonna let the lube rest for a little bit. I probably won't take it in nowhere today. But uh, before we leave, I gotta uh, top off that tank real quick and I'll show you guys what I mean by that. All right, so over here, I already have pre-mixed salt water. It's been sitting for a little bit. I only It's only two gallons, as you guys can see right there, the two. But this is the salt that I use. Uh, nothing crazy fancy, literally just instant ocean. That's it. Nothing like no reef instant ocean stuff or anything like that. I know this brand makes another one that's like reef for that. But I've used this forever. It's worked out. The corals may not grow as fast as other salts or anything like that. But the fish are happy and healthy and that's all that matters. So this is another thing that I have. It's a big jug. Uh, when I lived in the apartment in Nebraska, this actually was an RO collector. Now this is also just a big fancy siphon. It's an electric siphon. But... So what I've done here is the cord runs out here. I drilled a hole in the top so the tube can run out. And then I just take all my jugs and I fill this with RO. If you guys can see in there, uh, it's just a big thing. So back in Nebraska, this piece used to actually collect the thing because all the water because I used to like actually make it myself. But here, don't have the capability in this area from where it is since I've moved back home. So this is what my little makeshift Thing is turned into. So I'm going to take all those jugs over there. I got one more in these doors and then this one here we're going to empty the rest of this into the reef tank inside and then we will be getting to the store. So we're going to grab this jug, go on inside and top off this tank. So this is what's going on with it. It's just shooting out a bunch of bubbles all because the sump gets kind of off balance and uh, it I don't really know how it all happens, but it overflows up there and then doesn't quite balance itself back out. And then now you can see this is lower resolving in it, sucking a little bit of air with it. And it has nothing to do with low on RO. I know a lot of people probably comment that saying you're low on RO, all this stuff, because I'm not, because I have an auto top off system, which is this is the reservoir right here. So it's not that it just kind of, for some reason it gets off balance when I do water changes and stuff. And I did one the other day. So kind of little tweaks here and there. I didn't put enough water back in the tank. So as you can see, I got to uh, tighten it up down there to raise this back up to around here is where I like to keep it. And then uh, everything will be balanced back out. So I'm gonna add this two gallons and hopefully that should be enough. And if you guys come down here and look at this, you will see it is slowly rising. And I like to keep it where it's about like right here. I use the little suction cup as my measurement. Um, usually right above the suction cup is usually where I like to keep it. Just because just in case the power, God forbid it goes out, this tube up there, the outflow, will siphon it technically. It will siphon it until that mouth hits air. So if I keep it about here, then the sump only collects water to about there and it won't overflow and flood my entire house. Cause heard horror stories about that. I've been very, very close to having that happen. And uh, hopefully it doesn't happen. So right now it's gonna slowly fill up. The overflow, it drains. As you can see, more water's coming out than 
what normally should just because of uh this is all full up here so hopefully that'll happen we're going to tighten this up i had a little valve up here tiniest tiniest of movements change everything in this tank so if any of you guys are curious that's how sumps work look at that now it should stay about right there right where that little notch is in the glass it should keep the water silent so you never hear it just kidding you're starting to hear it that's just because it's going back down i gotta tighten it back up but that is about it so i'm gonna grab the jugs from out back and we are going to run over to the store and fill them up Shabalama, look at all that water. So I couldn't really film in the store because they were blasting the music, you know? So maybe next time we'll go in there and we'll be able to film. It's all about no copyrights over here, you know what I'm saying? So this is the water. It's all RO water for anyone who's curious. If you weren't paying attention earlier now, I, you're welcome. We're gonna go in, I gotta pour all this into its jug out back. Sassy is waiting on me. Let's carry all this water around back and dump it in. So that is it. It is now full to the absolute rim. Look at that. That's crazy. And then we got one, two left over that didn't fit in here. I thought I had less than I did. I guess I just, whatever, too much. Not a big deal. I will end up using it. Eventually, a lot of it goes to water change. I mean, I do a 15 gallons roughly on every on all of my water changes for the big reef tank that's inside there. But that is pretty much all I got for you guys today uh, from what you guys will see from me. So the rest of this video is all from a couple months ago when we went out at the backyard pond, tried catching bluegill, and it was just, I don't even know. I just remember being really funny. It was a mess. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you guys so much and see ya. But all you got the old ice rod out. I'm bringing out the old Nebraska side of me here. There we go, nice, nice, nice. And we're gonna see what happens here. Fish don't like whole wheat. Oh yeah, it's a little, little, little eight pound. Uh, oh, oh, oh! Look at the fight on this rod. Oh yeah. What you got there? That's a big bluegill. Good Jesus. golly, that thing's mutant. Oh god. Okay, that might be uh, He's too, a little too big. That might be too big. Look at the colors on that thing though. Wow. That like, thing's I didn't pretty. I think there was that big of blue. That thing's crazy Jesus. looking. He had purple and that thing's big and ugly. Dang, he's pissed. Look at that guy. Well, good work, Augie. Well, he's too big, so we're gonna throw him back. All right, give him a toss. See you later. You give him banjo a run for his money on bluegill job? Oh, I used to catch so many bluegill. Really? You're a big bluegill guy. Hot huh? dog too, or like dog food? Big wiener guy, huh? Yeah, big wiener guy. Oh, nice. Oh, goodness! You got a tarpon on there. Oh my God! <laughs> good golly, you guys, all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Wait, the fish, you still got the fish. Still got him. It's another big one. Oh, nice. Don't let him go. Don't let him go. Don't let him go. Don't let him go. You better not let him go. I got him. I got him. I got him. Turn it on. Dude. Good golly, look how big he is in this bucket. Oh my goodness. All right, so we got a big one so far. I want one, another one that's just a little smaller. <laughs> uh, they may be picky and may not eat that big, but oh my God. I almost died to the, the weight. I think I got hit with the weight and then the hook hit me in the neck and then Augie slips and falls. I don't even know what's going on right now, but all right, we're gonna try and get a couple more and see how this goes. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Are you, <laughs> you winning or losing here? I got it. Oh my God. Is that the same one we already caught? Big mama mama. You keeping that one too? No, no, we want one smaller than that. I don't want to take like, like these real big ones out of this pond, you know? I feel like if we take the real big ones out, then they won't make more, you know? We got to keep the, the population somewhat okay in here. I really don't know how many fish are in this pond, but yeah, we can throw that guy back. Wee! 